What is up guys? Jake from OneHive here with our next war recap video. This is the war that you've seen a live attack on. You saw the Ninja Live, uh, the game plan. So this war's had a lot of coverage. Uh, the Masters, as we went up against, you see we get the win there. But they did use basically all of their attacks. So we give them the respect of what they did to our bases. And it was a close war. You see six stars. Uh, again, what you saw in the first few videos, they did have a pretty hefty Town Hall 10 advantage. And they used it, you know, really well. They really did. They they brought their town hall to extra tax down. They two star our top our town hall tens pretty quickly and used those tens to three star a lot of our uh, town hall nine bases. So they made it a competitive war. So congrats to the masters. Uh, was a fun war. We for the most part did pretty well. A little bit sloppy, but that being said, we had one guy that something came up or something happened. He didn't get one of his attacks in one of our town hall tens, and we sort of had him for that. To the one that didn't he didn't get started there. I think that was just a scout attack that was on there, but. Uh, and a few that were just one starred. But when the war was actually over, we did have a Town Hall 10 or two, I believe, go for three stars. Could have grabbed a few extra ones, but they were just going for the practice at that point. Their Town Hall 10s were were anti two. They weren't like anti three stars where we could come up and you know use our nines to get two stars on most of them. So only on the bottom few were we able to really even use some Town Hall 9s to two star those. And it made it very difficult because our Town Hall 10s were stretched thin being being outnumbered like that. But again, a little bit sloppy on our part as well. But did have some very, very nice attacks, so let's get to them. You've already seen some from this war. Uh, but right here, we'll look at the uh, one Town Hall 10 three-star we did have, which was Rhett coming down and crushing their number 15. Uh, pretty low Town Hall 9, honestly. Uh, 20, 20 heroes, roughly. Uh, only level two, one level 2, one level 1 Inferno Tower and under-upgraded air defense. So that really is a story of this attack. He's just going to come in, he's going to grab that queen, he's going to grab an air defense, and he's going to grab an inferno tower, and then from there he's absolutely just going to roll over it with La Luna attack. Because when you, especially when you have those level 7 air defenses, uh, town hall, a Town Hall 10 can just La Luna it to pieces. I mean, he doesn't need... You know, he doesn't get a tremendous amount of the base with his kill squad, honestly. Uh, CC troops start coming out. He's got the jump spell down. He drops a rage. All that's going really well. The queen's finally going to get over there and get that jump, uh, start moving her way in. A little bit of distraction there. Could have created that funnel a little bit wider with some more wizards. And I think that queen would have moved her way right in. But honestly, it goes pretty well. Because once she does, she finishes off that CC, this dragon right here. Uh, but the infernal tower is already dead. You know, the king got in there, the, the golems, uh, all that went in there and got the infernal tower. The air defense is already down, so she's just going to sort of walk her way around the top part of the base. And then again, because of the fact that he's only got those level 7 air defenses, he can come in with his Laloon and just, just wreck the rest of it. There's really no threat here for him besides that level 2 infernal tower. But as you see, he's got a freeze for that, so no big deal there either. Right there, drops the freeze off. Uh, it's going to also take out that sweeper for a few moments, let those balloons get in. Uh... Lava Hound starts to bust here, but that's what he wants. Uh, balloons coming in on the backside. That Tesla popping can drop one more there. I would have got a couple more right there. And good, good identification that that was happening because it comes on the backside and drops a few there as well. So right there, a few back end balloons. Uh, last Lava Hound goes down, but pretty much good timing that all the balloons are closing in on that last air defense. So we'll fast forward just a little bit here. Boom, right there, got a two for one because of the right angle on that air defense. And then the pups are just going to do the cleanup with the balloons going right to the core to those high HP buildings, which was absolutely perfect. Good job to Rhett. All right, moving on to some Town Hall 9 action. Actually, hold on. We're not going to Town Hall action yet. We're going to move back up one and show you one of the Town Hall 10s that our Town Hall 9s did step up to three star. Because I thought this was a very impressive attack. You know, it's, it's a low Town Hall 9. I mean, it's got level 3 Inferno Towers, so that's pretty big. And it's centralized Town Hall protected by those level 3 Inferno Towers. So even with it having pretty much Town Hall 9 defenses and a poorly placed King and Queen, that is not an easy attack, guys. If you think it is as a Town Hall 9 with no freeze to get in there and deal with that when it's all in the core, all those high HP buildings around there, uh, just load up and give it a try. I think you'll you'll find out that there's a lot that can go wrong uh, between the dropping your troops and getting that actual two star. But just drops down the queen, pops down some healers, start doing a little bit of a, a, a queen walk here. In, in range of that expo for a few moments, but he's got, I think he brought four or five healers on this one. Actually, I forgot to look there, but many healers. Uh, so it actually keeps the queen up pretty easily. She gets out of the range of that expo and from there he's in pretty good shape. Comes in from the bottom with a heal for a few hogs. He wants to just get, all he wants to do here is grab a few 
uh, buildings really get that archer tower out of the way for some percentage points down there and to get that cc lure so mission accomplished there he's just going to do this the old trick of uh, letting the queen deal with it bring her over uh, let the troops come over and target his queen the healer's on there no problem really she's going to be able to deal with it especially with no balloons there even with that dragon uh, she's going to take it out just probably had to pop her ability i think he does yep right there pops the ability doesn't even have to use a rage takes her out and that's that now he's going to come in i love the angle he takes on this base there's one little spot the queen can sit and be out of range of that second inferno tower and still reach the town hall and that's exactly where she goes he has to get that first inferno tower taken care of but he's going to do that he's got a few golems going down he's got the king drops a pekka uh, everything funneled right in with that jump and the queen is drops a rage form which is great they're going to go right in really quickly here and then watch this queen she's just sort of hanging back out of the way taking out a few buildings and then right there she jumps into that money spot she's right going to take out that elixir storage and then she's going to focus on that town hall and the First Inferno Tower is already dead. Now, she's out of range of that second Inferno Tower. She's on the Town Hall, and that is going to be GG. I mean, the, there's no chance of it not going down now. He's already got the percentage points because he drops a few Giants and Wizards on the backside just to get some trash buildings. So as soon as that Queen finishes off that Town Hall, boom, there's the two-star. We'll start to fast forward because now it's just about getting a few extra percentage points taken out. Ooh, that Inferno Tower almost went down. Not quite. Uh, but his healers are just working on that, uh, on that Giant, our Golems there. No big deal, just a waste of time, but still, very nice. 68% on, on a Town Hall 10 like that, excellent attack by hell. All right, 16 is one of the ones we looked at in the game plan video, but this guy did change his base. Uh, it was It's not a lot different. He just sort of inverted it and moved a few things around, and it still could be La Loon like I talked about in the in the game plan video. Could come in from the top, grab that queen, two air defenses, could absolutely crush this base, but Alpha Dog decides to do it with Hogs instead, which is always an option. Hogs can, if done correctly, can take out pretty much any Town Hall 9. Actually, probably any Town Hall 9, uh, especially on a second attack if you know where the traps are. Right there, the Tesla pops in the corner, just drops a barb and some witches, and now they're going to take care of the the dragon as well in the CC. The queen's down. She's backing them up. Uh, that, that Valk's coming out. It's going to get taken care of as well. It's locked onto a golem, but everything's going to move in and grab that really quickly. And then right here, the funnel's being created, drops that jump spell. That's going to let him get into the queen very easily. She's pretty much exposed. So there comes the king to help out with that. Uh, the CC troops are already dead. Now it's just about getting some double giant bomb triggered if he's got any. It turns out this guy actually just has four singles, and he has them in each of those large compartments or those large openings where those two by six spaces. That's not a good idea because... Again, you know you're going to get at least one with the kill squad. So right there, one goes down. And actually, I think a second one goes down. But it's also a bad idea because the bomb is right around where you're going to need to drop that heal anyways. Right around all those high HP buildings where they're kind of clumped up. So when you're doing a four single bomb placement strategy on a base, don't put it where you're going to need to use a heal spell anyways. Put it where you're going to not want to use a heal spell and that way you like we talked about in the how to uh, base building video you force the hand of the attacker to use the heal spells where you want them to not where he already wants to so that's what's happening here you'll see he's dropping those heal spells down where he would have dropped them had there not been a giant bomb there uh, so the bomb goes off and it really changes the, the outcome of the raid none whatsoever uh, but two of them got triggered from the kill squad so really he just just controlling a couple of his heal spells but again you see what i'm talking about he drops a heal on that location where the giant bomb was that already been triggered because that's where they needed to be anyways. So remember that when you're building your bases, especially if you're going to try a single uh, bomb placement like that. And putting one Tesla in a corner might be a, a good idea, but in all four corners, that's a lot of defense that you're wasting uh, because, you know, the, the hogs are, they can just drop a loon or they can do a lot of things just to take that out pretty simply. Uh, so might want to re rethink that as well. But excellent attack by Alpha Dog. Absolutely crushed that base. Uh, good job, buddy. All right, moving on. Let's look at let's look at Cookie. Let's look at Cookie taking out number 20 here. I like this attack. Uh, just a, a straight go-ho. Very nice. Uh, let's see. Where'd she come in from this one at? Another one on this. Look at this base here. This is what I was talking about on some of the other. I can't remember which which where it was but you see this base and there's only a few double giant bomb possible spots i mean there you know that they're in one of those what is it three spots basically on this base and that gives the attacker and a centralized queen so that gives the attacker so much flexibility as to where they come from 
And once they get into at least a couple of those areas, which obviously that jump right there, boom, he she is now connected two of those areas where the of the three likely double bomb spots, regardless of whether she actually triggers the jump giant bombs, she has eliminated those. So now she can path her hogs in a way that protect them from triggering at the same time. But as you'll see, she gets in here and they're both there. So not only did he centralize his queen and have pretty obvious spots, I mean, they're right there where you can come in and get them both at the same time. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. Right here, a golem goes across. He gets one. Uh, there goes the other one. In just a second, you'll see it go off. And this one at the bottom already triggered. The queen's actually going to get the next one, but the hogs are not even going to path there because all the defenses are eliminated from that side. Uh, so that's why you don't want to do it that way. It makes it too easy on a good go-ho attack like Qu Cookie's bringing here. And then you, once you send the hogs in this way, uh, she's got heal spells for days, basically. She can keep those hogs up, just surgical deployment style, working through the base. The only threat is actually the defenses. And when hogs are standing in the heal, you're not going to lose many to defenses. A few back-end hogs, and that is pretty much going to be that. So excellent attack by Cookie. Nice back-end wizard for some cleanup. Uh, away from the hogs, always remember that when you're deploying your cleanup wizards, do it on the opposite side if the hogs are finishing on. Uh, that's going to give you the most uh, bang for your buck there. Uh, you'll see they're starting to work their way around. Just cleanup time, a little swag poison there on the side, and excellent attack cookie. All right, let's look at one more. I think you guys will like this one uh, because I know how you are. Now, let me, I want to try to explain this one. This is a, a, a really nice Falc attack, but there's something import, more important than just the, the niceness of the attack here that is sort of a, a theory type thing. The, this is a cleanup attack, and there is a Lava Hound in the CC. So when you know that to be the case, Valks, depending on the base layout and if you can properly funnel them in there, they are so powerful because of the fact that you can do your queen walk and keep her completely away from the from the kill squad, from the from the you know, normally you need her to sort of funnel into that area where you want to take your kill squad because you need her for that dragon or that uh, you know those troops, whatever's coming out of that out of that CC to help take it out quickly and not lose your golems and not lose your king. But when you have a Valk, excuse me, when you have a Lava Hound in the CC, you don't need her for that. So letting her go an opposite way, take out trash, take out defensive buildings, and using your Valks to kill the queen quickly is the perfect solution. It Valks are hero killing machines and that's what they do they run right in they spin a few times the queen goes down so letting you know he, he's going to get so much out of this queen it's just insane plus he's going to easily get in here get the queen taken care of the king taken care of and then into that core and once that happens he can just send his hogs in so this is just the perfect go vaho you'll see the, the Lava Hound comes out, but you really want to use minimal wizards on this part because you don't want it busting. You want that Lava Hound chasing your golems or your Valks or your king or whatever it wants to lock onto. Your hogs, for God's sakes. It doesn't matter. It's literally like they had nothing in the clan castle when you do it this way. So you'll see right there, the queen's completely away, doing her thing, taking out what probably a 25% of the base by now, several defensive buildings, and she's still going. She's still full health, basically. Uh, but the rest of the base is crushed. Coming in from the opposite side with some hogs. You know, the Valkyrie, the redhead's still in the core there. Beautiful. And look at that, that Lava Hound beating on a Golemite. Now he's going to get on the King. I mean, it does so little damage. It's just not, it, it's just like it's not even there, guys. So think about that. If you know there's a, if it's a good base design for it, you know there's a Lava Hound in the CC, use that Queen Walk, but keep her going the opposite direction of your kill squad. Just let her go do her thing. Let her take out a third of the base on her own and then use your, your Valks, your King, your Golems to get into that core. And whether it be back in wounds or back in Hawks, just wreck the base for the rest of that. Just like Jay Money did here. Beautiful attack. And I love the thought that went into that because again, we've seen this done before. It just makes them wish they hadn't put a Lava Hound in their CC. All right, guys, that is it. A very nice war by One Hive and also by the Masters. Awesome job to you guys. Keep it up. I'm sure you're going to have continued success. A uh, lot of wins on their side, so excellent job to them. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, we do. By the time you're watching this video, we have already searched for our next arranged war. It's not a true arranged war. It's more of a scrimmage between uh, a lot of the Fair Play clans uh, that mem had members come to it. One Hive actually had members, obviously had members come to it. And just sort of to promote the Fair Play community that we've got going and all that. So uh, you're going to see people from all sorts of different clans. I'll try to probably 
uh, figure out a good way to show who all was involved in it because it was a, it's going to be a, a fun event. Not a serious, you know, clan war, just a good, fun, fair play scrimmage. Uh, so I'll be looking forward to some awesome replays for that. Hope you liked it. Until next time, Jake from One Hive reminding you guys to suck less.